Hello there. Today we're looking at the Unit 3 Vesper Theory and Molecular Shapes Simulation. Uh, it's a FET simulation. And we're going to be preparing a number of molecules as described on our worksheet and see if we can take a look at the geometry of the molecule. There's two things that we're going to be noting. Not just the uh, molecule geometry itself. So the molecule geometry being what we can actually see so as the atoms line themselves up, what shape do they make? We're also going to be looking at the electron geometry, um, which we will see referred to as uh, sometimes the electron domain geometry, or ED geometry. And the thing to keep in mind is that when we have unshared pairs of electrons on the central atom, they do affect the shape of the molecule, but they are not visible. And so that's why the electron geometry might be different from the molecule geometry. So we have to factor in the fact that electrons uh, that are unshared on the central atom will take up space, but will not appear to us as uh, an arm or a leg or however you want to think about it sticking out of the molecule from the central atom. So we're going to go through and start with two atoms attached to the central atom. The number of unshared pairs on the electrons, we're starting with zero. And so as you can see, our first spot can be filled in with this. So notice that when we look at these shapes, um, if I try to move these bonded atoms close together, they are repelling each other and they're getting as far away from each other as they can. And so that's really what Vesper theory is all about. Um, and so the fact that electron pairs are going to these electron domains um, that are between atoms and around the central atom, the fact that those repel each other as far apart as they can get, that's going to be how we use this to predict the shapes of the molecules. So the farthest apart that these two atoms can get from each other is 180 degrees. Um, let's move on to the next scenario where we are adding one unshared pair of electrons on. Notice it's called a lone pair here. And again, this takes up space. So there's one unshared pair with two atoms attached. And so you can again record the geometries. Notice the bond angle though for this 120. Um, it's not exactly factoring in the fact that these unshared pairs actually repel a little bit further. So these bond, this bond angle would actually be slightly less than 120 with one unshared pair attached. All right, let's add another lone pair. So again, we observe the shape. And notice if I couldn't see the lone pairs, which is what the real, when we talk about this molecular geometry, this is what it would look like to us, but the presence of those lone pairs are affecting our shape. And just to show you that last one, what that looked like as well, without the lone pairs, that's what it looks like, right? So it has this bent shape, but we can't see the lone pairs. Notice adding the second lone pair, and those take up space, and so those are pushing the legs of the molecule a little bit closer together than they were before. So our electron domain geometry looks more similar to tetrahedral, even though um, the shape that we actually see, because we can't see the lone pairs, is actually just bent. But again, this bond angle is actually going to be less than 109.5, which is the bond angle we would see for tetrahedral molecular shape because these unshared pairs actually take up more space. All right, let's move on to a third pair around the central atom. Notice how these three pairs of lone electrons are lining up. Notice they're all around the middle of the equator, so to speak. So they're at basically 120 degrees from each other, the lone pairs, and we still see the bond angle between the atoms of 180. Right? So this would be like the top and the bottom, so we can get this so it's up and down. And then notice our unshared pairs are around the central center atom, kind of around the, the middle of this line. All right, and lastly we've got fourth and we see that same arrangement again of our atoms and the lone pairs now are at, let's shift this around so we can see it, around the central atom. Those look like they're more 
like at 90 degree angles from each other. Because right? this is where they can get the furthest from each other with this arrangement around the center. All right, let's move along to three atoms attached. So there you go, there's your bond angles. That has zero unshared pairs on it. When I add a lone pair or unshared pair, notice the change. So that pushes these three arms a little bit closer together. And notice now it's giving the bond angle of the tetrahedral arrangement we call this trigonal pyramidal, trigonal pyramidal, however you want to say it. And again, this unshared pair of electrons can't actually be seen, so it just appears like this little tripod or pyramid where the central atom is not in the same plane as the terminal atoms. Again, these bond angles would actually be slightly less than 109.5 because this unshared pair of electrons will repel a little bit further than these shared pairs. Let's add a second lone pair. So notice this is called T-shaped and that's because it forms a T. And so again these unshared pairs are sticking out around. So the three electron domains around the central atom, right, these are about 120 degrees from each other. And then we see the atoms that are bonded at 90 degrees from each other, so that's where we get the T-shape. But notice this, if we look at the central atom from this angle that we had here. You can kind of see the three atoms around the center there. So this is the axis, and this is around the equator here so to speak. That's about 120 degrees apart. All right, and we will add one more. Right, We need three lone pairs. So notice the three lone pairs. That's still giving us the T-shaped. And those are now at like 90 degrees from each other and from this one other atom and these two are and it's 180 between this side and only 90 between this atom and the center. All right, moving on to four atoms attached to the central atom. One, two, three, four. There you go. And zero unshared pairs, so there's the tetrahedral shape and electron domain geometry. If we add one unshared pair of electrons, a lone pair. Notice that goes, so again we see this like axis and equator alignment. So we've got two atoms kind of around the equator with the one lone pair, because this is where it can land itself so that it gets the furthest repulsion. And then we've got this axial, right, so these are all 90 degrees from each other. And then we've got a second lone pair to add onto there. So notice that pushes these four atoms all into the same plane together because the unshared pairs will take up more space and they can do that by getting themselves in the axial arrangement. So these four are at 90 degrees, four atoms are at 90 degrees from each other, and then the unshared or lone pairs are 180 degrees from one another. There we go. All right, going on to five atoms. So in any of these scenarios where we've got more than eight electrons bonded to the central atom, those are our exceptions, our expanded octet. And I'm not going to see that in all cases, but when we do, that's what it looks like. So notice we've got the trigonal bipyramidal, trigonal bipyramidal. So we see this axis and around the equatorial position here. We've got three atoms sticking out at and those are 120 degrees from each other around the middle. And then we have like a axis top to bottom. Right, that is 90 degrees from the equatorial atoms and 180 degrees from this side to this side. Add in one more, one lone pair here. 
and there you go, that's what that would look like. So notice it pushes these atoms. down a little bit so it says square pyramidal so the reason this is called square pyramidal let me put this atom up at the top here so we can take a look get that lone pair shoved down here there we go watch when I take this away so this is why it's called the square pyramidal because it kinda makes like a pyramid shape and it's sitting with all four of these atoms in one plane 90 degrees from one another, and again, this unshared pair of electrons is taking up space down here, but we can't actually see them. All right, and the last scenario where we've got six atoms attached, and so this is our octahedral geometry. So we've got four atoms in the same plane together at 90 degree angles. We've got these atoms at 90 degree angles from those in the equatorial position. And there you go.